Hey guys, it's Castle here again. Welcome to another video review. So today I'll be reviewing the CM Storm Alcor gaming mouse. So this is a new line of mouse from CM Storm. Uh, new ergonomic, uh, two new ergonomic mice, the Alcor and the Miser. So basically, the two mice uh, actually spot the exact same chassis, uh, the same exact feel. The only difference is, in fact, uh, in the sensor. So this is the optical version, which uses the S3090 uh, uh, from Avgo. The other one uses the Avgo 9800 uh, laser sensor. So a little bit of background, I guess, because in the ergonomic uh, mice you have. Have like the i3, the Razer Death Adder, the uh, Seal Series Rival. So uh, CM Storm really haven't made like an ergonomic right-handed mouse uh, to uh, target this market. However, I feel like these are two very, very great offerings, and at a very a price that is quite competitive, and I think it can really uh, pack a punch. So I'm going to be talking about like the price, the build quality, uh, kind of the shape, overall shape, how it compares to i3, Death Adder, etc., and the overall sensor performance. But in terms of sensor performance, it's nothing new. It is the old like uh, sensor but uh, on with the review. So first off, on to the boxing. So the boxing is quite simple. It comes in a simple box. Uh, inside, there's a mouse, there's one pamphlet, and that's pretty much it. This seems to be the trend with a lot of gaming companies. They're just making sim very simple packaging. Uh, Zoe started it, and a lot of people have followed suit. It. So with the Alcor, I don't know if there are drivers, but for the Miser, you have to go online to fi uh, find the drivers. Uh, I searched a long time. I'm be doing two separate reviews uh, in this regard. So I bought this uh, mouse, the Alcor, for 200 199 Hong Kong dollars, which is very, very cheap. It comes to a price at uh, 39 US dollars with a one year warranty. And in terms of what it can do, like the 3090 sensor, I think this is a very competitive price point in comparison. The Kana is priced at like 59.99, and other mice, such as like the Death Adder, was priced at 59.99. I believe the Death Adder 2013 edition is priced at something like that as well. So I think this is a very, very cheap option. I think CM Storm mice are cheaper in general, so definitely this is a very, very attractive for some people who just one a cheap uh, cheaper mice but a good quality mouse as well Moving on to the weight and the shape, this is a relatively lighter mouse. It weighs in at 87 grams, and uh, in comparison, the i3, for example, is 100 grams, and the Death Adder is 111 grams, the 3.5G version. I believe the uh, 2013 version is slightly lighter, but uh, you can see this is a lighter mouse. So for people who want a heavier mouse, this might not be for you, but for people who want like a lighter mouse, uh, this is uh, quite nice. If you play a lot of RTS or MOBA gaming, uh, this could really, really work as well. In terms of shape, it is not a very big ergonomic mouse. Uh, the dimensions are 60.4 by 40.2 by 124.8 millimeters. So in terms of size, you can see for comparison the i3, I don't have it plugged in right now, and I have like a Death Adder right here. It is uh, smaller than the i3 and it is smaller than the Death Adder. Um, in terms of the rival comparison, I don't have the rival anymore, it is a little bit shorter and doesn't feel as uh, long and is quite a bit smaller. So you must uh, be prepared if you do like the Death Adder, you like the uh, IE3, this would actually be a very, very nice fit. However, it is uh, just a bit smaller. Now moving on to the shape as well. So when I first got this mouse, it is very, very reminiscent of the IE3. If you can see in these pictures here, the way on the side of like the aspects, I'll describe it on the way in the left side where the thumb rest is, is very similar how it just curves in and curves out rather than the very straight, uh, relatively straight rival or the relatively straight Zoe EC. On the base, uh, it, it does have a fairly fat base as well, which kind of goes into the uh, palm of your hand, similar to the way that the i3 does and somewhat in the way of the uh, Death Adder as well. So this is actually very, very nice. I believe that if you're using an ergonomic mouse, it should have this kind of fat base, which uh, goes into your palm. And definitely with the it, with the rounder base, I feel like that would make for a more comfortable mouse. In terms of, that's what makes the IE3 and the Death Adder so great. But with the, like, for example, with the Rival, it's not as round. It doesn't have round as a base. So for me personally, it doesn't fit inside the palm as nicely. So whether or not your palm gripping, finger gripping, and claw gripping, you do, I think, have having a rounder base would would make more sense. In terms of the uh, height profile, this is a slightly lower mouse. Uh, this have a slightly lower height profile. If you can see in the Death Adder, it is quite a high uh, profile. This one's more like the uh, Zai, like the Sensei lower profile. So definitely, I personally like this because I use the Kana B2, I use the Zai, I use the Sensei, so I like that lower profile and ergonomic um, feel as well. In terms of the right hand side of the mouse, you can see that it has nice rest. It's very, very similar to the i3 uh, in terms of how the groove uh, conforms to their fourth and fifth fingers. So this is, uh, if you like the Death Adder, if you like the i3, this would definitely feel very, very hands on and you definitely, I think, like it as well. 
moving on to the build quality so for what you're paying you're paying $39 so the build quality is decent but I wouldn't say is extremely extremely top quality it's not like I personally have always recommended Logitech as being the highest quality in terms of the material they use um this one it's coated with um it's, it uses ABS plastic and it's coated with something called UV coating so it makes if I had to describe the uh, surface it's very similar to that of the Zoe FK so if you had very uh, let's say dry hands this mouse would feel very very slippery uh, and if you had sl uh, slightly moist hands this mouse would uh, be quite nice and obviously if you sweat a lot it, this mouse would still be okay it would absorb the sweat but I feel like this kind of material this UV coating it would take a longer time for it to deteriorate so in that sense uh, that's how the uh, mouse feels um, some people like it, some people don't. I mean, I, I like the uh, Kana V2 black version kind of matte surface. This kind of matte surface, like, I, I'm okay. I'm not, a, I don't mind it. I, I don't dislike it. I like it. It's okay. So some people might like it. So if you like the FK surface, this surface would definitely be for you. In terms of the other uh, build quality, maybe um, the cord, for example, on the Alcor, it uses a just a normal braided cord, almost exactly the same as the FK. The Miser actually uses a braided cord, but I'll get to that uh, later. And it's uh, quite flexible, uh, quite nice. Uh, so not too much to say there. And in terms of... Um, Oh, I'll move on to the scroll wheel now. The scroll wheel, it uh, uses a supposedly a high, something called high impact Alps encoder wheel or whatever the hell that means. Um, but to describe the scroll wheel, it scrolls quite quickly. Um, there are very little stop, it, this is very little stop between every single notch and it is, you use very little force and you can just go to the next one. So some people might have problems uh, when they scroll through and uh, searching weapons, for example, uh, they might find it hard to control the scroll wheel, but this is just a personal preference. Uh, onto the switches now, the switches it uses, they say, uh, Japanese Omron, which I highly doubt because uh, there are pictures showing that they were actually made in China. Omron switches rated for 20 million, which is quite good. Uh, 20 million Omron switches were only, I've only seen them in the Logitech mice. So for them to use it in the Alcor this and the Ma uh, Miser, I think is uh, pretty good. Um, the click, for example, I, you can see in my click videos, uh, it, it, there are Omrons. They feel very similar to most other Omrons. I think the implementation is quite similar to the Kana, the Kana V2, sorry. Uh, with the uh, IE3, uh, very quite similar to the IE3 as well. So, um, Omron switches, the way to go. That's really that simple. Moving on to the sensor performance. So, nothing much to t say here, really. It's a 3090. Uh, oh, sorry, sensor performance, uh, it ranges from, uh, four, you can set it from 800 DPI to 4000 DPI, which are the specs. Uh, I'm not too sure whether or not there are drivers, because this is not yet released on their official website yet, so I'll update this video whether or not they have drivers, but there are basically four DPI settings that you can set um, with all 3090 uh, implementation, a lot of them. You have 800, which is like the white one, and you go to uh, 1600, 3200, and then you go to uh, last one, which is 4000. So personally, I use the 800 and 1600. So if there are no drivers, which I don't know yet, but this is my initial review, uh, then I guess it limit does limitate uh, what limit what you can set it at. With the Miser, it's slightly different. There are drives for that for now, so you can set it, but for this, you can't set it. So that is a downside uh, for now. Again, I'll update you if there are any uh, updates. In terms of like just acceleration, there's no acceleration with the, this sensor. In terms of smoothing, it's actually very, very minimal. Like you can see, I didn't actually post a lot of the pictures, but uh, I posted some pictures here. Uh, and yeah, moving on to maybe another thing with performance is the liftoff distance. So with the 3090, a lot of implementations, there is a very, very high liftoff distance. So we did this by fi uh, fixing their uh, uh, the lens to lower the liftoff distance. And Kana B2 and this both suffer. They do have the same implementation of 4000 DPI uh, 3090 sensor. So um, the liftoff distance is high. If you use a white surface like this scarab right here, uh, you're going to definitely feel it. Using a tape fix, it does work. Um, the, the base uh, liftoff, I think, is probably like four, 0 0.4 centimeters. So it's like very, very high. If you use the tape liftoff, it lowers it about uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 uh, mm, uh, centimeters. So uh, that is fairly good, but it does affect performance, if you can see in these pictures here. So I would, for my purposes, I use 800 DPI and I use tape fix, and I'm completely fine with that. So what if you go on to use like 3,200 DPI or 4,000 DPI, the tape fix would affect your performance. So that's just uh, really a heads up. Moving on to, uh, I think I really just covered most of it. And just maybe uh, concluding this uh, short review, I'll do the review of the Miser. Um, if you like the Death Adder, if you like the uh, IE3, this would definitely feel at home. It's, uh, it has a very, very nice, smaller sh uh, shape 
uh, than the Death Eater IE3. Um, I personally prefer it over the Rival actually. The Surface they use a UV coating similar to that the FK and uh, if you have uh, dry skin it doesn't work as well if you have slightly moist skin that's yeah, actually quite nice. So at its price point $39 it's definitely worth the purchase I feel like. Uh, there's on the fly switching which uh, you can or cannot do. Um, and overall, it's just a very, very solid mouse at what is price point. It won't replace the Kana V2 for me, but I think it's a pretty decent offering. So hope you liked that video review. I think I may have missed some things, but feel free to comment and I'll try to get to you. If you like this video, um, visit me uh, or subscribe. And if you want to get mouse or whatever, visit me at my store at uh, itechtech.com. So hope you guys liked that video review and thanks for watching, guys.